Joining me now from London is James Allison. He's the head of investor relations and mergers and acquisitions at Unilever PLC. James, thanks so much for joining us today. Let me begin by asking you, this is a big announcement that's come from uh, Unilever PLC this morning. Uh, can you explain to us the rationale behind this decision? Uh, uh, hello there. Uh, good afternoon. Probably it is. It is there now. Uh, so uh, yes, this is. Uh, of course, it's a uh, it's a it's a sizable investment that we're talking about here. Uh, Unilever, as you know, uh, has 57 percent of its turnover uh, in the emerging markets. In fact, we consider ourselves to be the emerging market consumer goods company. Uh, the kind of flagship uh, business that we have in our emerging markets uh, portfolio is Hindustan Unilever. We think it's a great business, a business that we understand in, in detail. Um, and uh, as we seek to, uh, uh, to grow organically in the emerging markets and also as we look at other opportunities to acquire businesses uh, in the emerging markets, we're reminded uh, that uh, our business in Hindustan Unilever is, is the outstanding business. And so we, we think... Uh, that it's appropriate at this time uh, for us to be increasing our uh, earnings exposure uh, in the emerging markets. Uh, and, and to do that, uh, what we're doing here is to, um, is, is to, uh, to seek to buy an additional 22% uh, of, the, uh, of the business uh, so that we can own 75% of the business. I, I hasten to add we have absolutely no intention of seeking to delist uh, our business, we think it's important uh, for us to have a listing in, in, in India, and uh, there's, um, there's, there's absolutely no reason why we will change our mind about that either. Uh, James, you actually preempted one of my questions, uh, but thanks for clarifying that you will not look at delisting the business in India, so clearly you're not taking it above 75%, but you mentioned uh, looking at a greater share uh, of, of earnings from India and rest of the emerging markets. Can you quantify what kind of contribution do you see coming from the Indian markets, and will this be the strategy for some of your other emerging markets also? Are you upping your stake there, there also? So we, we, we look at each case in its particular individual merit. So you'll have seen recently that we've been active in Pakistan. Um, but, you know, sometimes it makes sense and sometimes it, it doesn't. So uh, in, in India, there, was a, there is that opportunity for us to make an offer to our Indian uh, subsidiary shareholders. Uh, they're free to take up that offer if they so desire. There's no, uh, they don't have to feel compelled to do that. The, the, you know, there's going to be 25%. Uh, as, a, as a minimum of the stock, which is liquid and available for people who want to remain uh, owners of the stock. So we, we think that it makes sense in, in India for us to do this. You shouldn't read in too much uh, to this. Uh, in other areas, we look at individual cases on their individual merits. James, uh, we also spoke with Aberdeen Asset Management this morning after the announcement. They're, of course, one of the largest FII stakeholders in HUL. And uh, in their opinion, uh, 600 rupees per share is not an uh, attractive enough premium. What would you want to say to that? Uh, and would you look at revising this offer at any given point? So I should make it clear that this is the offer. We have absolutely no intention to uh, increase the offer over six. We think that this is uh, more than a, a fair price, uh, offers the, uh, the institutional shareholders in India the opportunity to, uh, to uh, have a very uh, substantial premium over where the stock is currently trading, uh, and it's a great liquidity opportunity. It's very difficult to, uh, to, to, uh, to uh, liquidate the stock in such a way as we're offering. Uh, it's, you know, I stress it's entirely up to the individual uh, shareholders to determine whether or not they think the price is reasonable or not, if uh, Aberdeen or any, anybody else for that matter determine that the share price is not, is not enough, then, then they can continue to hold on to their stock. But we think that this is a very fair offer, um, and, uh, and we think this will be very attractive to a very large number of shareholders in India. In the past uh, three to four years, uh, both the global management of uh, Unilever PLC as well as the Indian management for HUL have really put a lot of focus into the business here, whether it is innovation or distribution on the kind of products you're offering, on the kind of royalty and the knowledge and the uh, technology that is being given from the parent company. And uh, it's brought about a huge transformation. The uh, analyst community, the market is beginning to recognize that. Is this step also in a way a reward 
up for that. I use uh, uh, at the parent company satisfied with the kind of revamp that has been done in the Indian market. And also, again, I'll ask going forward, what kind of expectations are there for the Indian market contribution? Yeah, so we, 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 we think our Indian business is performing very well. I was uh, looking at the, the presentation that was given by by Nitin, uh, I think, yesterday. And uh, if you, you look at the, the innovations that, that uh, Nitin is talking about in India, and particularly in personal care, you'll see these are truly international uh, innovations and capitalizing on the fact that Unilever uh, has uh, substantial uh, resources, which is deploying centrally and then, uh, all of the subsidiary companies are, are getting the benefit of, of, of all of that innovation. So we think the business is very well run, and we think the business has performed very well in the last couple of years. And looking forward, we're very confident that we've got uh, every opportunity to continue to perform well. And uh, India, of course, is a very, very important country. Uh, you see the, uh, the GDP growth probably starting to pick up. Uh, this, I think, is, is going to be... Uh, the third largest uh, country by GDP by the time we get to 2020, the world's greatest population. It's a tremendous place to do business. Uh, we're confident in our management team, and we, and we just really want to be able to capture uh, uh, more of the earnings than we do today. All right, uh, James, thank you so much. appreciate you taking our time out and joining us. That's James Allison. He's the head of investor relations and M&A at Unilever PLC.